Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Custom Carving and Epoxy UK. I hope you're all doing well. So I'm going to be doing a, a, a bloom again today just because I'm loving this mold at the moment and you've probably seen that from my recent videos. But I want to do something a bit different. I don't want to do the traditional bloom effect and I've been watching quite a few videos on um, the dragon scale effect from different sort of epoxy artists and I wanted to give it a go because I've not seen it done in a bloom before so that's what I'm going to try and do is replicate that dragon scale effect but still keep it hopefully looking like a bloom because I think it's going to look really cool so um, if you've not seen any of my previous videos as well I like to make my own little centers for the center just using the bubble technique and I think it gives a really natural finish um, so I've just made up four at the side because I like to do them in bulk so I've got a few ready and as you can see they don't all work out that one's got a bubble in it that's far too big for me and I don't like it so I've got three out of four though not too bad um, so I'm going to be using a, a fast cure resin um, and it's the first time I properly used this Jan Chun one but it's a Jan Chun fast cure and I got it from Timu um, but if I'm being honest I'm running low on my regular resin so that's why I got it I need to get an order in of um, some more resin um, so again it comes in, it's bubble free, self leveling, and a four hour demol. So it is a fast cure. Now, I don't know if the dragon scale effect will work, first of all. I don't know if it works with fast cure either because I've not done it before. Um, and I don't know if it'll work with the colours I've picked because I think it's very dependent on the colours and the different consistencies, the thicknesses, things like that to make it actually work. So I'm going to give it a go um and see what we do so i'm just going to mix up four ounces of this resin so i always pour the hardener in first and i don't know if i'd be better to do this with a, th a thinner consistency of resin um it's my first time doing this properly um and i like to try new techniques just to see what happens you know what kind of effects i can get whether i actually get that dragon scale effect um i don't know <laughs> Because I say I've not even tried it in a round coaster yet, but I like to try different things and I like to see um, if I can do things that I've not seen done before. Um, and I've not seen anybody yet do dragon scale in a bloom. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if there is an artist out there again that's done it, I'd love to see the video. So put it in comments. And again, with this being a fast cure epoxy, it is so thick. Um, really hard to actually pour <laughs> out of the container and I find this with all of the fast cures they're a very different consistency to your regular cures and I think that's what makes them cure quicker they they're, they're so thick um, I'm just hoping that I'm still going to be able to pour this once it's done and this one as, as you can see it's almost like a gel when it comes out um, and what I've found is when I put them through a bubble removal machine as well, you get hundreds of little tiny micro bubbles in them, the fast cure resins. I've tried three different ones so far and they all get the same results. Now, luckily when it cures, you don't see them. Um, but as you can see, it's like a gloop that comes out. It's not like resin at all. <laughs> and this one's almost cloudy to start with this Jan Chun one. Um, and it's been stored at normal room temperature around about 21 degrees in my room at the minute um, so it's not the temperature but look at that and that is just me putting it in the cup and it looks look at that <laughs> it's like a gel um, it looks quite cloudy before I've even mixed it so a little bit concerned with it being the first time I've used this one but I'm just going to treat it like I do every other resin but i don't know how i'm going to see if it's streak free if it stays that cloudy <laughs> so just doing it quite slowly because if i do put it through the bubble removal machine then the faster you mix it the more bubbles you're going to create and there's a big risk of it overflowing with those bubbles but as i say it's the first time i've tried this technique it's the first time i've seen it tried in a bloom or in a flower um, and it's the first time I've used this resin, so lots of firsts on this video. If it's your first time to the channel as well, welcome. Um, if you're a regular viewer, welcome again. And if you can do me a favor whilst you're here, tap that subscribe button, give it a like, 
put something in comments, you know, it all helps the channel, helps the algorithm. But look at this as I'm mixing it. It's still, it's like a gel. It's very, very strange, this one. Um, but I'm going to keep, keep persisting with it and see what happens. Very, very strange. I don't know, has anybody else out there used this resin? Because it is, it is, it's like a thick gel. So I've mixed this for about three to five minutes and it's still a gel-like sort of form. And if you can see, there's no streaks as such, but it is just almost like gel. Um, so if you have used this resin before, this Jan Chun Fast Cure, let me know if this is normal. Um, because I've never had a fast cure epoxy that still looks like gel after I've mixed it. And obviously there's an awful lot of micro bubbles in there, which I expected because I get that with every fast cure resin I use. But just with this still being like a gel-like consistency, look, you can still see lumps of almost jelly in it. Um, I don't know if there's a problem with this batch or not, but I'm going to persist and see what happens anyway. I'm going to put it through the bubble removal machine for five minutes. That's going to be interesting. Um, but as you can see, there's just still like little lumps of gel, it seems like, in it. So let me know if you've used this Jan Chun Fast Cure resin before, um, if that's normal or if I've got a dodgy batch because I've never known this before. Um, <laughs> it's It's got a nice medium viscosity on a positive note. Um, but yeah, um, very unlike the other fast cure resins I've used. And look, it's almost like a gel on there. It's not like a clear liquid like I expect with resin, but gonna put it through the bubble removal machine anyway, see what it comes out like, and then persist with the project. There we go, guys. So that's what it looks like after five minutes in the bubble removal machine. And you can always see that gel where it's come up around the sides, but I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work at all or if I've got an issue with that resin. Um, but anyway, I'm going to persist because <laughs> I've, I've got the resin mixed now anyway. So I'm going to probably go in quite equally with these four different cups because I think I want four different colours if it works. But again, let's just look at this as I pour it. It looks so strange. So I'm going to do probably about a quarter of a cup of these, maybe a little bit more. Maybe up to sort of half a cup um, for my colours. And then push the rest out with, well, I say clear. Look, it's not very clear. Um, <laughs> but I'm hoping that those bubbles will naturally go and degas um, like the other fast cure resins I've used. It's just very, very strange to me, this. Just the consistency. Doesn't feel like a normal resin. Um, so there we go. I'm happy with that. Maybe a touch more in that one. And then I'm going to leave this clear to hope. Well, I say clear. <laughs> it's not really clear. <laughs> um, just to um, push everything out, hopefully. Um, but I'm going to use the one with the least in. Perhaps I'm just going to add a little tiny bit. So there's 1.5 in there, I think, to push it out. Because I think that's where I've gone wrong with the Dragon Scale technique in the past. I've uh, not had enough clear to push them out. And this is slightly larger than a standard sort of coaster mould as well. So uh, I'm just conscious of that. And I'm also concerned as to whether it will go into those petals properly. But I've got a plan for that. So the first colour I'm going to mix is going to be a, um, a white, which I want quite opaque. So I'm going to use this metallic... Um, pearl white and all I'm gonna do is stir it around like that and this will be my opaque color whatever's left on the stick will work so about that much um, so that's that one and I'm gonna go with three opaque colors one transparent and the clear is the plan so Going to use some metallic gold in it as well. Again, not too much, but I, I just, because otherwise, it, last time I tried Dragon Scale Effect, it absolutely took over the piece because I used too much gold. Um, I think that for me will be enough. So, literally, just that much. So, that's my gold. And with this being fast cure, I can see it's thickening up already. So I think I need to get a move on. Um, but last time I did dragon scale effect, 
you'll see the gold, um, I've just got these coasters, completely took over the piece, but I'm hoping it doesn't this time. Um, so next I'm gonna go in with my final opaque color, which I'm gonna use this blue metallic paste, because I love the colors. But I had a really weird reaction last time uh, I used this, because I tried the bloom effect and the bloom seemed to react with this paste. So I've just given it a really good mix in case there was something that was just unmixed. But this seems thicker as well than the other paste I've got. But again, let's see what happens. You don't know until you try. So that is my blue. Um, now to that blue as well, I thought it'd be fun to add a little bit of chameleon powder as well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of Let's Resin Blue chameleon powder in there. Not too much, just a sprinkle like that. And then my final color for my transparency color, which I believe you need, um, I'm gonna use just some Let's Resin uh, Blue Resin Dye. One, two, three, four, five drops in there with a little bit of azure blue alcohol ink just because I love that as a color and I'm hoping that gives it a slightly darker transparent look one two three four and then we'll see what these look like mixed so this is the white but again it's still a gel like consistency even when the colors mixed in very strange resin this one and just make sure you, you stir it thoroughly like that so that you're mixing everything properly. And as you can see, it's a lovely color. It's almost pearlescent, this one. So that's my white. Next is my gold. And so this is quite a dark gold, this metallic one. Um, which if, if you want to lighten it, you can always add some lighter gold, um, which actually I might do in this case, because that I think that'll be too dark for the piece. So I've got some lighter metallic gold. I'm just going to add a little sprinkle in there. And those that know me know that I like to mix my micas anyway. And that just lightens the whole thing a little bit. And if I get two tones of gold, so be it. Um, I'll be quite happy with that. So I quite like that as a color. So that is my gold. Um, this one is the, again, the opaque blue paste with that little bit of chameleon powder. Again, just mixing it thoroughly, especially since I put that chameleon powder in there. But again, lovely color. I'm just really not sure about the consistency of this resin, you know. It's really <laughs> got me thinking. Um, is there a problem with the resin? Because it's still like a gel. It's not like a, a resin once what, what, the way it should be once it's mixed. And then this one, hopefully, is going to be quite a dark transparent. If not, I can always add a little bit more. But yeah, I'm quite liking that as a color. Don't know if it will be dark enough and I might add just one more drop I think of the Azure Blue alcohol ink to it because it should still keep it transparent that way by using the alcohol ink which I've been led to believe is what you need to make this effect work so let's just mix that around see if that's darkened it a little bit more. There we go I'm happy with that as a color. Lovely. Um, so, <laughs> now, what I thought is these edges, it, when it, the whole point is to almost puddle pour it and it should push out. But in this mold, I know it struggled in the past to get all the way to the edges when I've tried puddle pours. So what I'm gonna do is just go around the edges first with a little bit of this gold um, so that at least I know there's something in the edges for it to work with. So again, just gonna fold my paper cup and a tiniest bit just in the edges like so trying to get it reasonably equal but I'm not the best at pouring out of cups if you watch my last video you'll see 
I just want, as I say, I want to, I want to make sure that I know there's something for the resin to push into in those corners. And just a thin line all the way around. So that way I don't really need to worry. As long as I fill the mold, it should get there. Um, so that is that part. And now I believe it's just a case of almost puddle pouring it in the center. So I'm actually going to start off with my dark blue. And I might try and get two layers, if I can, out of each color, just to see what effect that has. Again, just scraping my stick off, folding my cup, and I'm going to put a small amount in that center. Like so. And I've still got plenty left, which is good. Um, I'll probably say half of it I've poured now in that center. So that's that. Next, I'm going to go in with the gold. No, in fact, no, I'm going to go in with the white because hopefully if it pushes all the way out, the gold will be there. So that there's that pearlescent white. Again, just pouring it into the center like so. I'm going to put a tiny bit of this transparent now. I'm going to save most of that until the end. It's a tiny bit of the transparent. As I say, it's, it's not really going evenly. And this is a level surface, so I don't know what's going off here. <laughs> um, maybe I need to recheck my levels, but I'm going to persist. A bit more gold. Now that's all the gold I'm going to have in this. So now I'm going to go back in. And it seems to be leaning that way. And it's never done that before. Um, so back in the center with the, uh, the blue. And I'm going to try and get it all out this time. Then another ring of white. Look at that. It shows me that my surface probably isn't level, but I'm going to persist and see what happens. So that is the rest of my white. I don't think we're going to get a very even <laughs> track and scale effect by this. Um, so apologies, guys. I should have rechecked how level my surface was because that is definitely going more that way. In fact, what I'm going to try and do is just rectify it whilst I'm doing it by putting my stick just underneath because this is a little bit concerning. Hmm, still not making a massive difference. But anyway, I'm going to continue. <laughs> um, and just put a drop more of that blue, if I've got any left, just in the center of this white. And I'm hoping that my clear is going to do the job here at pushing it all out because I'm not very happy with that. The fact that it's gone over that side hasn't really gone over that side. In fact, I want to rectify it, but I can't really. There we go. Another light, little bit of the gold, tiny bit more of that white, but I'm not hopeful now. Just by the way, it's kind of shifted to the, um, the right. I wasn't expecting that at all, but I'm still going to go ahead and now just go into the middle, try and push it all out with my clear. And it should take all of this. Just going to scrape the rest out as well with a stick. But again, I don't think I'm not that hopeful, guys, that this is going to work. I'm hoping to be pleasantly surprised. Although the colours seem to be forming that circle now. And then what I'm going to do is stick one of these centers right in the middle. But again, I'm not very happy with this resin. You know, it's the first time I've used it and it doesn't feel like resin to me. Um, so I'm just going to get one of these discs off the side that I've made, plunk it in the center, make sure it's covered in that resin over the back and all the way around, like so. What I might do is just see if I can scrape a tiny bit more out just to go over that and make sure it's completely covered, which it is. Um, but yeah, I'm not confident this is going to work. 
<laughs> we will find out together, hopefully. And I think I'm gonna try it again with a different resin, because I really don't like this one. Just the consistency of it, it just doesn't feel right. So it's almost like a gel rather than a resin. Um, so that's that. I'm just going to torch the top anyway to get any of those surface bubbles off. This could be one of those projects where nothing goes right, guys. But again, just trying to stay away from the edge, but just trying to torch it, you know, get rid of any bubbles. Also encourages any effects to happen that might happen. So here we go. Let me know in comments, do you think this is going to work? Personally, I don't think it is. Um, but just based on the way that that all happened, didn't feel right to me. Um, just checking that is reasonably central, which it is. And then these spare colours, as always, I've got my dragon drip mould. So just going to scrape what I can in and around this mold. It's not the morning yet, but I did have a quick think and I'm still going to pull these in, the petals, just to that centre, just to see if that has any effect or not. Again, trying not to move that centre. And again, I'm not touching the, the base. This is purely on the top. So a bit like I would with a bloom. But again, I just wanted to see if this has any effect as well. And I thought it would help make those petals stand out, if nothing else. And you never know, it might actually encourage the resin into the centre as well. I'm just making sure that's still central, which it is. And then I might give it a mini swirl, like so. And it's only just covered that. But again, I thought it would just, any chance I can do of making this look a success, even if I don't get the result I want, I wanted to do. So just gonna leave that to cure now, and I'll see you in the morning. Now it does look like it's doing something on the outer edges, so there's hope yet. <laughs> morning guys, and it is the next day. And I'm excited for this D-Bold, um, although I'm not holding up much hope, to be honest with you, because as I say, that resin, it always turned out like a gel, and I don't think that these techniques will work in gel-like substances, with it being that fast cure, but we're gonna find out. So, um, just demolding it. And remember guys, if you've not already, do me a favor, like and subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference. Just give it a thumbs up, put something in comments. Let me know if you're liking the content. Um, and although this is a fast cure, actually, it's still a little bit flexible, which is interesting. Um, in fact, what I might do is after this demold, is actually put it into a bowl while it's still flexible and see what happens. Um, which is interesting because the other fast cures I've used, once they've cured, they're solid. Um, so, don't know if there's an issue with this resin, with the way I mixed it, or with just anything to do with it. So, there we go. So, I'm going to flip it over and let's see what we've got. <laughs> um, yeah. Not great, to be honest with you. There is a purple circle um, with a gold edge, basically. Um, and there's a weird sort of bubbling on the top of the surface as well. Um, very strange. I think, to be honest, I think it's that resin. Um, I'm not a fan. Uh, you can just about see the bubble technique through it as well. But yeah, that really hasn't worked. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. But again, just goes to show, not every video works, not every project I do works out. Um, and look, this is so flexible still. It's, 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 it's very strange um, for a fast cure resin. But anyway, I hope you've liked the content. I'm gonna try this again with my standard one-to-one -one, um, and see what happens. But I'm probably gonna turn this one into a bowl and have it sort of maybe this way around, I think. Um,
Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Custom Carving and Epoxy UK. And I bet you're getting sick of the sight of this mold. <laughs> um, I've been obviously, as you saw in the last video, I've been attempting with the dragon scale effect. And this is the closest that I've got so far. But I just thought I'd try something different because I really don't like that side. <laughs> um, and I thought I would try doing the colours, exactly the same colours, but in a different order and see if that creates a different effect. So I've just used the, re the, the last of my um, Apex One coat there, mixed it up and put it through the bubble removal machine. But I just thought it'd be interesting to see if we do the colours in a different order and do the pigment on the outside and then a couple of layers of the, the, the stronger pigments in the centre, just to see if that has a different impact on the dragon scale effect because I'm determined to get it right. Um, so you'll have to excuse my workstation again. I am gonna give it a tidy after this experiment. I just wanted to try and nail it because this for me isn't fully the dragon scale effect. It's a cool effect, but it's not quite what I was after. So we're gonna try again because I've got one more of these centers left and then we can compare the two different methods, hopefully. So again, just gonna pour enough of this into each cup. So that one is going to be my blue, the semi-transparent one, that can be the gold, this can be the darker blue, and this can be the white. And then hopefully that should be enough there to push everything out when I'm done. So I'm left in there after putting my colours in with about one and a half ounces, so it should be enough hopefully. So I'm just going to mix up that blue again, the same as last time. Um, for the semi-transparent and I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, six of those and then I added some uh, alcohol ink as well didn't I to it so I want to keep it exactly the same um, and just like I say see if layering it in a different order makes a difference so let me know in comments do you think it's going to make a difference or do you think it's going to be the same effect that we got last time because that's what I'm trying to do is just perfect it once I know a technique and it works so it was this is your blue from let's resin that I used so again just going to put four dots of that in one two three four and that just gives it a slightly darker color which is what I want And again, guys, while you're here, let me know if you're liking the content. Um, put something in comments, like, subscribe to the channel if you can, it makes a massive difference. Uh, so this is that sort of darkish blue. Happy with that as a color. Now, I also don't know if, if using the metallics is making a difference because I am using this metallic gold. I might try it again using just normal standard um, mica powder but this is a metallic gold that I've been using and again just remember with the metallics you don't need a lot literally the tiniest of bits especially when you're only doing this much so again mix it round and make sure you mix your mic as well because if you don't mix them well you'll get little powdery patches and things like that which look really um, bizarre when you're finished so there's my gold This one I'm gonna save as a bit of clear, and then this one I'm gonna use this metallic white pearl paste. And you'll see why in a second. So again, just whatever's left on the stick. And I'll go in that one. And again, it's just to see if layering them in a different way gives us a different effect or not. It might not, um, but I'm just curious more than anything. If I put the semi-transparents on the outside rather than the thicker micas, is that how I'm gonna get a better dragon scale effect? Um, I don't know, <laughs> it's the answer, and that's why I'm trying it. So, that is my colors pretty much ready. So now all I'm gonna do, uh, I've got one center left as well, which uh, you saw me make in the last video, just using that bubble technique. Um, so I'm gonna go around the edge with my semi-transparent pigment here, which is the, the blue that we've just mixed. And 
And again, trying to get it all the way into the edge. But it's just to see if putting them in a different order has a different effect. And again, I'm trying to keep it reasonably even. But again, I might as well pour it all in because I've mixed up just over four ounces of resin, which should, and I say should, <laughs> completely fill this mold. So there we go, that is my semi-transparent as it were. Now what I'm gonna try and do is just go round again with a little bit of the clear before I add those stronger micas. It doesn't matter if it pushes it back a little bit. So this is why I kept that little bit of clear. Like so. And then I am going to layer the gold and the white because I want it to look a little bit different. So almost like a puddle pour this. I'm going to put a bit of the white first, then a bit of the gold. And again, this is just experimenting. Different ways of doing it. So a bit of the white. I'm going to stop there. And I do need to re-level my table. I'm noticing this now. <laughs> bit of the gold because otherwise it's not going to be level at all and I definitely need to do something about that so in fact what I'm going to do is just try and lift up it seems to be going towards that way so I have got a little popsicle stick here and I'm just going to elevate not that much <laughs> just going to elevate it a little bit to try and bring everything a little bit more central um, and that's too much for me. But I do need to re-level my um, workstation, which is what I'm going to be doing after this project. So again, that's going back in with a, another bit of the, the gold. Well, that's a bit better already. <laughs> bit more of the white. And then a bit of the gold. Hopefully it's going to push it out a little bit. And I'm just intrigued as to if this is going to have an impact. And then I've got my clear. So I'm just going to go in the middle and try and push those out as much as I can. And you can see it completely pushes them out. Now just quickly before they come back in, I'm going to put that center in. And that's because I'm, I want to make sure that that is completely submerged in the resin before it closes up, like so. And then I'm just going to pour the rest over the top. And hopefully this will give us a slightly different effect um, and hopefully give, finally get that dragon scale effect. But I don't know. <laughs> um, and that's the, the fun thing for me with these experiments is you don't know what you're going to get until the next day when you demold. So again, just making sure that's completely submerged, which it is. And now again, just to add some interest, I've got my silicone tool. So I'm just going to pull these out into the petals like so. Just to see if it gives us a different effect or not. And just into the center of each petal, almost like when you do your blooms. And then pray it's going to give me more of a dragon scale effect. I think it's going to leave a clearer edge, which I don't know if I like or if I don't um, at this point. And it almost seems to be submerging all that metallic and white in the center. So again, just going around getting any bubbles. That I can and then that's it I'm gonna leave it hopefully the magic's gonna do its uh, the resin's gonna do its magic and we'll get a bit of a better dragon scale effect than with that one but uh, let me know what you think in comments and I'll see you in the morning for D mold
morning guys and it's the next day and just looking at this side this is i was going to make it into a bowl and it's got a fingerprint on it because i timed it wrong but i'll get rid of that um but just looking from this side it looks a lot better if you can see through it looks like it's created that dragon scale effect fingers crossed we may have got it this time third time lucky this eh? <laughs> so gonna demold it And let's see if we finally got it. Still a little bit soft because it's not been quite 24 hours, but let's have a look. Wow, that's a lot better. A little bit in the center there that didn't, and I think it's because this isn't fully level. Um, but I've definitely got it around the edges, which is what I wanted. So there you go, that is that dragon scale effect. And it just shows you the difference between trying the different techniques, but for me, I think the clear works better on the outside, um, well, the, the semi-transparent, um, and then the stronger micas in the centre, and you can just about see that coming through as well, but really like that, at least I know now that I can get it, I just need to figure out why I got that bit. I think it's because my surface has unleveled itself over the past few months, so I'm going to re-level that before the next experiment, um, but love that little dragon scale effect. So it just goes to show. <laughs> so if it's not working, try a different resin. If that isn't working, try a different way of doing the technique and eventually you'll get it. Um, so there we go. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.